That was pretty quick. Yep. The thing just just the thing just jumps now. You just press go live and it goes live like instantly. Uh -oh. Yep. How are you, Charles? Ooh, tired as tired can be, boy. <laughs> I know the feeling, brother. I know the feeling. It's been a long, long day. Oh. Yeah. All right. Hello, hi, everybody. Welcome on this wonderful Monday evening. Um, in fact, for some of you on the East Coast, it's Tuesday morning. Share, share, share. How's my sign, Charles? Isn't that pretty? Yeah. Looks like a birthday cake. <laughs> What's up, everybody? What's up? I think we're going to have a lot of people on tonight. Um, uh, I want to thank everybody for uh, sharing and sharing and sharing the, uh, the announcement post. And as well as right now, now's a good time to hit the share button, guys. Uh, I see a lot of people rolling in already, and I expect, uh, I, you know, I, you know I, I'm so afraid because I just saw someone post about 45 minutes ago that the internet was out in uh, Wailua house lots. <laughs> oh, gosh, which is where I live. So before we go on, Charlie, let me, I keep forgetting to make you a co-host. So if, if I go down, Charles, you will, uh, you will have it. So I freak out. I have been having problems with our internet for for a while now and um it's sporadic um but you folks have witnessed it a few times already so uh let's just hope and pray that tonight uh it it hangs on it hangs on so anyway uh we got a great show for you guys tonight with all that has been going on um here on Kauai, the, the outbreak of covid and and um we, we you know we wanted to bring on it, it the, the way the media or the the way it's come out, uh, some establishments were named, and uh, we just wanted to bring them on tonight, share their uh, their story, their protocol, and uh, remind everybody that it's now is not the time to let your guard down, guys, at all, at all. So, I'm looking forward to tonight. I think we got an amazing lineup scheduled. We got uh, Rob's Good Time Grill coming on at seven followed by uh, Terrence uh, Y Ali Ali or the Beast Y Ali Ali to uh, talk about the Kauai Brunch Babes event. And then we have um, Lena Ala. <laughs> Lena Ala, Kumu Lema, Lena Ala Jardine. Be talk, uh, Paval Jardine to be talking about the uh, concert that was held at the stadium as well. And then uh, Troy will be coming on from Troy's in Lihui. Troy Morikawa will be on to close us out. So I'm, I'm excited. You know, again, uh, we have not spoken to anybody. This is, uh, you guys are going to hear at the same time like we did or we will. So I think it's going to be fun and exciting, Charles. Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of things to discuss, uh, but mainly, you know, the takeaway is how can we continue to keep ourselves safe? Uh, I hope and pray everyone finds this um, enlightening to the point that, you know, certain things happen, but we, we try to, you know, we try to be transparent as much as possible. It's always been our goal for the Mel and Charlie show to be informative and hopefully we can bring that information across. And it's all, you know, a lot of it is all dependent on how it's comprised, you know, how it's how it's put together. But I know I, I read one of your posts that, you know, it's gang, you know, we're not here to point fingers at this. A lot has been done. We gotta find a way to control this um, this spread of this virus. Um, it's in our community. And um, because it's in the communities now, we need to find a way of uh, keeping it contained, uh, but you know, again, it doesn't it doesn't make anything easy 
occur when when we're allowing uh, minimal travel into the islands, and that's both locals as well as visitors. But but you know, I hope and pray that you know anybody that's traveled that they take it upon themselves to maybe um, even though they have a pre-negative test that maybe they might want to decide to hunker down for several days to make sure to make sure that they're absolutely cleared of anything because you know anything's possible at the airports anything's possible on the planes uh, anything is possible prior to departing even though you got a test because you took your test prior to departure so hopefully um you know we got so many things working a lot of moving parts but it's the key thing to take away from what i just said is how do we stay safe we, we need to find we need to find that balance we need to find that balance personal responsibility guys i mean <clears throat> regardless of what goes on around us regardless if tourists wear masks or not wear masks i mean you know listen up guys we all have our own responsibilities to do and and i think i just want to say hi to my daughter uh she doesn't come on often in fact i don't even know if she ever came on after we had her on as a guest but uh what's up sweetie i love you girl so cool um you know i, I just want to say this you, you, you know in football you go with an undefeated season you're, you're on your way and and just like the uh volleyball undefeated they go up to to the uh, the, the championship rounds and then they lose a the game and everybody's like devastated and you start you know trying to figure out why what went wrong and you know it's no different than the virus uh you know we were on such a good track and then we we re-enter safe travels or what i call unsafe travels and then boom but now what i'm finding is the people here are all starting to it, it, like people getting angry with each other uh, and, and that has to stop people that's why i posted the koi aloha video again i do that probably three times a year when i see the tension starts to build. Now is not the time for that, guys. Now is the time for us to come together as a community. Remember, we're, and I know a lot of people weren't here for the hurricane. I understand that. But for those of us that were, uh, now is the time to, it's no different. I mean, you know, we could call this hurricane COVID. The, the physical devastation is not present like it was in the hurricane, but everything else is the same. The, the feeling of, uh, of, of uh, restrictions and and no no uh, no jobs and and you know the 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 remnants it feels like the hurricane and uh, the difference though uh, back after Hurricane Iniki we weren't yelling and blaming and being angry with each other no we all came together we all came together and that's what it's going to take guys so while there's an opportunity to go and try to go blame people no, let's not do that let's not do that i mean it's COVID is here how it got here we know it how it got here it came here on an airplane the, the local community didn't go create this pot of stew a covid stew and serve it to everybody and that didn't happen this thing came from wherever it came from and it came to our shores and now we got to deal with it and uh, we have to take care of each other. And rather than start screaming at each other for, for this and for that, no, man, let's console each other. Let's help each other. Let's, let's be a one, one team going through this and, and we will get through it. But no sense wasting energy on getting angry and posting crap and it's not good. No, it does no benefit no one. Listen, maybe it makes people feel better when they can go and vent, but it's not, it's not going to help us get through COVID any quicker. So please, guys, now is the time to come together. And, uh, and you know, we, we try, Charlie and I, we try to be transparent. We try to bring people on that can help us understand what's going on. <clears throat> help us understand. So we don't rely on all of these posts and gossip. And no, we, we want to try and bring in the facts so we can make informed and educated decisions. That's what we try to do, and uh, and that's what we'll continue to do uh, as long as it takes, as long as it takes. So, if you haven't watched Kauai Aloha, go watch that. If you weren't here during a hurricane, it might be a little different, difficult to understand, but if you were here, 
I would lie if I told you every time I watch that video, I don't get tears. As often as I watch it, I get tears. So, anyway, nice shirt, Charlie. Mm -hmm. yep. I know everybody goes, nice shirt, Charlie, nice shirt, Charlie, nice shirt. Not one of you said nice shirt, Mel. Oops, this side. Not one of you. Can someone just say nice shirt, Mel, please? Just, just for my ego. Can someone just say, hey, nice shirt, Mel? <laughs> please? We will end this show. <laughs> Come on, I'm looking at the comments. <laughs> well, thank you all very much, guys. Yeah, See you Bernard. guys on Wednesday. Bernadette. Oh, yeah, hey, it. Bernadette. <laughs> Bernadette, you just saved the show. <laughs> See, we can still have fun. Look at look all the nice shirts. Nice shirt, nice shirt. I feel a lot better. Well, anyway, guys. Look at all the nice shirts. Charlie, I got more nice shirts than you. Well, if you big hard enough, you'll get more nice shirts than me. <laughs> Look them. Even my wife said nice shirt, Mel. <laughs> Look them. Now they're not stopping. Okay, you can stop now. You can stop. Oh, geez, Louise. <laughs> uh, my sister said thank you. Look at all my family on here making me feel good. All right. Well, what do you say, Charles? What do you, you want to bring in, Rob? Yeah, let's, let's do it, man. Let's, let's do it. it, man. Here we go, guys. Our first guest tonight, Rob Silverman from, uh, see, look at Jade. I love the Kapow Warrior Green. It's a UH green. Rob Silverman from Rob's Good Time. Uh-oh. I think, I think he was on hold. I think, I think so. He, he stepped out. <laughs> Oh, nice haircut. There we go. Now, 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 now I really feel good. Anyway, Rob is the owner of uh, Rob's Good Time Grill. Um, and I will say this, that it, I, I, I went to Rob's, I think one time for lunch. I had to meet a, uh, it was a business lunch that I went there. And uh, I will tell you that from the moment you step onto that premises until you leave, I can honestly tell you right now that they practice safe, safe practices. I mean, that this uh, down to the QR code menu, to the spaced out seating, to to the sanitizers. I mean, they, they know, everything. So, so it is Rob. What's up, Rob? Hello, guys. How we doing? Uh, we're doing okay, my friend. Great. Thanks for you having know, me. You know Uncle Charlie, right? I do. How are you, Uncle Charlie? Good, doing good. <laughs> All right, Rob. Well, thanks for joining us tonight. As you know, uh, we are uh, with the recent uptick in cases, clusters that uh, have occurred all over the island of Kauai. Uh, Charlie and I wanted to take an opportunity, get, there were four, pretty much four establishments or events that were named. Wanted to give you guys an opportunity, to come on um, and, and just talk story. Uh, I was just talking about the safety protocols that I observed at Rob's. Uh, that one time, I, I honestly do not go out as, as uh, nowhere near as often as I did pre-COVID. But the one time that I did go there, it was uh, it, it was very, 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 very safe, uh, and, and the staff practiced safety from the time I entered to the time I left. So I just wanted to get that out of the way. Um, but Rob, this is a tough time, buddy. What, what's going on, man? Yeah, it's been a pretty uh, interesting couple of weeks for sure. Um, so we had a couple of cases. Um, we closed down right away, figured out what was going on, um, took some time to evaluate our situation and, uh, and we're moving forward. We're gonna uh, be open Saturday. Everybody that's coming back has been tested. Um, everybody's gonna be good. We've sanitized, we've cleaned, we're ready. And we're gonna we're gonna do it again. Um, see what happens. So you're you're closed right now. You said you're going to open on Saturday, right? Oh, so you you've been down for a while. We have been closed since last Thursday. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I mean, it just takes time to make sure sort things out. You can't you can't have people going into work sick. We want to make sure that everybody's healthy. 
So, mm. so, and, and again, we don't want to hear specifics. I don't want to hear names. I don't want to hear any of that. But how does this go? You get informed someone's positive, then you you click into your uh, your uh, safety protocols. Is that is that how something like this works in a business like yours? Yeah. So as soon as we found out there was somebody positive, uh, we immediately had everybody go test. Um, as soon as I had more than one, we decided to shut down. Let's see what's going on and wait till everybody tests and take it from there. It was a, you know, I mean, having never done that before, it's an interesting situation. You have to, to find your way through it. Um, to me, that was the best thing to do. Safety first. You can't be open. So let's figure it out. Take our time, sort things out and move forward. So let me let me ask let me ask you so and and I'm glad you did it. I'm glad you did it. You know, it's uh it's not an easy thing and I'm glad you said what you've just said and that you had to navigate your way through this, you know, without any help. Now did the health department I, I believe the health department contacted you, right? Did they contact you? They did contact us. Um you know, they're, they don't close you down. They didn't do anything like that. Uh, we did that all on our own. Uh, we worked with them. We provided them information as much as we could. Um, we want to figure out what's going on. You know, I mean, it's a, it's a community thing, not just a personal mm -hmm. thing. You know, I, I, I shared with, before you came on, I, I, sh I did share with Mel, you know, we've been doing this for over a year now. And what we see is that it can happen at any time. You can take all the necessary precautions you want, but it just takes that one slight chance. And, you know, I, and this is just my opinion. I'm, I'm of the opinion. It's very, very rare that you're going to catch it from a surface and transfer it to you. It has to be that contact to contact person. That would you know. And I know, cause I've, I've eaten at your establishment. I love my wife goes bonkers for your poke. So sometimes, We'll drive from Waimea just for Poki. Even though that Ishihara right on the corner. They go, no, <laughs> let's go all the way to Lihue. So we will. And, you know, I, I thought maybe the wife would drive me, but she says, oh, honey, you drive me. So she gets a double deal. I'm I'm driving Miss Daisy just to go have Poki that day. But I see where the only time, and, you know, I've been, I, I've been awestruck by the fact that when people are sitting there waiting for their food or their drinks, they still have the mask on. Some places... The moment they plop the okola in the chair, boom, the mask comes off. I didn't see that at your establishment. I saw that people actually waited until their food came to them. So when you had a chance to discuss with your employees, did any of them say that maybe it's possible that when the food came and the mask came off, maybe that's when things started to happen or could have happened? Did they mention anything like that to you, your employees? Um. No, we never really discussed it at that level, but it can happen anytime. I mean, this right. thing is easily passed. Um, people just have to be careful, you know? I mean, you have to personally take responsibility for your, your safety and the safety of the people that you're surrounded with. Sure. Yeah, absolutely, Rob. We, <clears throat> we have been pounding that drum for a long time. And I know some people get tired of hearing it, some people get tired of hearing it, but it, it is what it is. This is not going to go away. Uh, we're going to have to continue this, but it, it really helps when you have, especially the businesses, because a decision to shut down, Rob, let's be real, costs you money. It, 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 it's at a time where you're already operating at a, a less than you know, your normal capacity because of the pandemic. Uh, that decision is a tough one to make, and, and it's good to see that... <laughs> that you did that and you did the responsible thing. But in addition to businesses being responsible, we as individuals got to be responsible as well. And uh, I like what you said. The first thing you did was tell everybody go get tested. Just everybody go get tested. Uh, and Charlie and I had this discussion earlier uh, today about testing and how vital it is to get people tested. And, and number one, to make sure that uh, your employees or your guests or your customers are, are not, uh, not sick, but also for the state to understand if in fact we were hit by a variant. Uh, we don't know that until we get samples of some positive tests that can be analyzed for the variant. 
So, I mean, I, I think that's critical, but it, it's, it's, um, I, I'm just thinking as a business guy, wow, man, that, that, uh, that, that's, that's a costly decision, but the right one. And we appreciate you, Rob. We appreciate you. <laughs> Thank that. you. It definitely is. You know, I think we got to remember that for the past year, we were really fortunate. Um, some tough decisions were made, but we were safe. I mean, you know, we fought the system. We didn't allow people to come. We were really comfortable. Now that we're opened up, it's the time to be diligent. And people got to remember, like, it's, it's more important now than it was that whole past year because you have an influx of people. And people can't, don't get comfortable, you know. Now's the time to really buckle down and stay safe. Now, how does the, um, say, for instance, you know, one of the dangers they talked about is, especially in an establishment, is when you might have a customer that will go from table to table and talk to somebody without their mask on. Uh, is your staff trained in spotting stuff like that to say, hey, that's not allowed and, and so forth? Your, your staff go through that training? Absolutely. You know, I mean, ours starts at the front door. As soon as you walk in, you're greeted, you're seated, your temperature's checked, you're sanitized, your hands are sanitized. Um, and they go over the protocol. Um, honestly, as a business owner, it is a chore to, to babysit people. And I'm not going to lie to you about it. It's, it's a full-time job. We brought on two extra people just to do that. Um, but, you know, I mean, people, yeah, 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 okay. And next thing you know, they're still doing the same thing, right? Um, right. So, yeah, it's, it's uh, business owners have to be responsible as well because there's nobody else out there that's going to police it. Okay. Yeah. And, and it, that's a constant battle no matter where you go. It doesn't have to be a restaurant. It's stores. Everywhere. It's at the mall. It's at schools. It's at workplaces. I mean, it's really, it, it, it is. Just letting the guard down. This is what Charlie and I talk about a lot is uh, some of the messages we get from some of our leaders uh, are really minimizing this, this virus. So it causes people to feel comfortable and let their guard down. And now is definitely not the time for that. And, and uh, wow, you, so you brought on two people just to be. Uh... <laughs> we did. I mean, our, our staff has been fantastic this whole time. We worked so hard together, figuring out ways to get this thing done and do it right and be safe. And that was our whole deal was to make people safe. You know, I mean, nothing else. Well. We appreciate you, Rob. Kawhi appreciates you. I mean, you know, uh, <clears throat> the coconut wireless sometimes is an amazing tool to get the word out, uh, positive and negative. And, and we're trying to, you know, our, our little dialogue before the show was, you know, now is not the time to be trying to figure out who got infected, where, and no, now is not the time for that. Now is the time for us to say, okay, hey, it's here, COVID is here, it's everywhere. Um, it's not just in four establishments. It's not just, it's everywhere. And we all got to be responsible for ourselves. Businesses got to be responsible for them, their employees and their customers. That's just the way it works. And, uh, and you're a great example, Rob, uh, of that. And uh, we want to thank you. Uh, we want to thank you. You know, I, I, you. I did want to say, uh, I hope you don't mind, but I'm really anal when it comes to this. You know, this thing right here is, uh, if you can see it, it's basically a hair mister filled with disinfectant. And I'm the type that I'll go into a restaurant and people say, oh, uncle, what is that? And I says, I know you and sanitize my hands. I'm going to sanitize again. <laughs> and my wife said, leave them in the car. I said, you cannot be too, too safe. Because the same way we let that mist out of our body, if it's infected, this thing will miss and try to capture it. So I'm over there squirting. She goes, oh boy. I says, honey, would you rather me be safe or sorry? I said, they can laugh all day like so. I hope you don't mind if I walk into your establishment because I love your food. But if you see with one of these uh, on, in, in my pocket and I'm shooting myself with it. Absolutely. You know, on that, on that note, uh, we've also added another layer of protection just to let you guys know that uh, Kauai Line Sanitation comes in every morning before we open and they spray the, uh, the complete area. Um, we, we started that uh, about a month ago now. Um, it just as a second layer with all these new people and variants and stuff like that, you know, you just can't be safe enough. Every morning? Every morning. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable. Well, Rob, 
you know, we do a feel good Friday every Friday. And uh, we really want to get you on one of these Fridays to come share. But we're going to take that opportunity today to, to ask you to sh why should people go to Rob's? Aside from the fact that you're safe and clean, um, you know, you're, 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 you have been around for a long time. You, Rob, you have been around for a very, I mean, my Lord, how long, Rob? I mean, I was a frequent customer at Rob's. I, I remember we had a lot but of But we questions. won't go there. <laughs> Um, yeah, going to be 31 years in September, actually. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, I remember you, you let me in when I was 16 years old. <laughs> yeah, I remember the day. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Rob, this is your shot, man. We got a ton of people watching. More will watch later. But uh, what, what, what can people expect when they come down to Rob? You know, all, all I can say is, first of all, thank you, you all for everything. And, you know, when you come into our place, you're going to have a good time. And that's what we're all about. We, we try to have the best people on hand for you, whether it's in the kitchen, behind the bar, at the front door, in the anywhere. Um, we just want to be better, and we always want to give you guys the best we can, and that's what we're here for. What's the, what's the one thing that everybody, I mean, I know there's a ton of things on your menu, but what is the one thing that well, many people watching tonight has never been to Rob's that live here on Kauai? What do they need to try at Rob's? And they need uh, to go there you, on, on Saturday. Go down Saturday. You tell them you saw it on Mel and Charlie. What is the one thing that they got to try? I would say if you come on Friday, get the prime rib dinner for sure. We do crab legs on Wednesday nights. Um, we were doing a brunch on Sundays. We're going to see what's going to happen with that. But um, try that. Anything on the menu, you're going to love. And the best part about it is you're going to be treated like you should. Well, I got to say, folks, try their French dip. It's made with a homemade bun. And I don't care what anybody says. I've had, I've had French dip in Florida, uh, up on the West Coast, uh, back when the old Woolworths, remember they used to have the French dip machine? They would slice it for you and do a, either a double dip or a single dip. But can't beat what you got there. You, you got a thing going with the French dip. So I'll stick with the French dip. I got to pick two. The French dip, off the charts. No best French dip I've ever had, no doubt. But your pokey nachos, yep. bro, that pokey favorite. nachos is off the charts. One of my favorites as well. <laughs> and it's everything it robs is healthy, it's fat-free, all of that stuff, man. Miso yaki it's, salmon, you'll love that. The which one? Misoyaki salmon? Misoyaki salmon, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> how much is the French dip? They're asking how much is the French dip? You got to go find out, buddy. <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, but it's, I think, right now. We'll take care of you. Don't worry. <laughs> the best way to eat a French dip, gang, cut it in bite size and use on chopstick because you don't want to dip that puppy all in that au jus and you won't get messy, but who cares, right? You pay for it. You're following that thing. <laughs> well, Rob, um, I just want to say thank you, man. Thank you for joining us tonight. Give our love to Lolly. You guys have been friends for a very long. I see Lolly several times a week walking the dog um, on our road. Yeah. And um, you guys have been amazing, amazing community people, uh, amazing friends. And uh, this just, this whole experience just uh just uh, i tell you just confirms everybody's um uh feelings about how, how you treat your staff how you treat your customers and how you love this community so thank you rob uh thank, thank you thank you guys so much for having me on tonight all right and also i'd like to thank you uh for helping the uh up-and-coming musicians you put on a lot of entertainment they're doing real well i i remember when i played there it was back when you had the little corner, you tried to stick this big Hawaiian with three other bits <laughs> in the corner for make skinny. Just never worked, but hey, we put out some sound, but you're still continuing that. So I'd like to thank you for that. You have a lot Absolutely. of up and, coming, up and coming people. Thank you. And not to mention all of the charitable events that you have hosted at your place for charity. You're a good man, Rob. Thank you. Take care, my friend. God bless, man. We love you guys. Okay. We'll see you guys soon. Take care, buddy. Right. Oh, I am hungry, Charlie.
I am hungry. <laughs> Hang on, let me help you out, bro. Okay. Whoop. Yep. All right. Yeah, man. Good food. Good times. Just uh, yeah, it was amazing how he immediately sprang into action. Well, you know what? You know what is interesting is just. It seems like a common theme, you know, a lot of these business have to take it upon yourself to navigate through this, this web, this, uh, this web of COVID. It's, I personally think, well, I'm sure there's going to be more help on the way to kind of inform and educate. I hope so. Because when you have an establishment like that, I mean, they're, they're doing everything by the numbers, no doubt about it. But I think they could use more help as far as, you know, what continual actions need to be taken and to be, you know, keep an eye on it. Because it, it could spring up at any time. You, you don't know, but we hopefully, hopefully it doesn't. But if it does, you know, everything will be uh, like cadence, right? You march to a certain step and hopefully you can stamp it out really quick this time. But hope there is no next time, put it that way. Hope there's Absolutely. no next time. Well, maybe next week, Charlie, we go head down there, do a live from Rob's, and uh, have some miso yaki salmon, man. I gotta try that, man. I love that. Um, I I, I want to try some miso yaki French dip sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Terence, why Ali Ali? I'm I'm almost afraid. I'm almost afraid to have uh, this guy on the show, Charlie. I'm like I, I this. Thank God, Dane is there. I'm so happy that Dane is there. Uh, hey, welcome, welcome, Dane and Terence. Why Ali Ali? Uh, thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you. Um, I'm I I think I saw you on. So you kind of saw us with Rob and uh, your event, the Kauai Babes Buffet. Oh no. What brunch, babes. brunch babes oh brunch babes brunch babes um yeah. was one of the the events named out in the in the media so uh first of all i identify i mean introduce you guys self. you had dane and terence wali ali you guys yeah. what do you guys do besides brunch babes so we actually own a salon in Lihue, and I'd like to say, first of all, we're pretty proud to be following Rob as business owners. I feel like he has far exceeded what's required of him to operate a safe establishment, and as have we. And so he's also a client of the salon. So yeah, pretty honored to be following him. Um, yes, we run a salon in Lihue. Um, and, you know, with COVID and owning a business, you know, we've had to obviously, like most other business, make pretty, pretty substantial sh changes to our environment, the way we work, you know, everything. So, you know, especially if we want to provide a safe environment for our staff, our clients, you know, it's and with our business, we we can't social distance while we're doing a service on you. So, you know, we really have to run it pretty tightly and and pretty differently. So, hey, uh, before we the kind guys, now is the time. If you haven't already, high tech, high tech, high tech, high tech. <laughs> well, let me just say real quick. Um, this full disclosure: my wife is a client of your salon, right? And, yeah. uh, so you know, I get the four one one on all <laughs> of the, on on how if they're clean, if they, you know, I can personally speak. I've been to Rob's. I've I've, I've been to your salon when you guys were prepping to open. Yes. Remember when you guys was going nuts, yeah. getting ready to yeah. open? When you, I remember on weekends, nights, you guys were out cleaning up the making uh, for the clients. And we appreciate that. We, Somebody's yeah. asking, what's the name of the salon? What's the name of the salon? Hair Razor Salon. Hair Razor. Right, right up the street. Right on right <laughs> street. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So... Um, what happened, my man? So, you know, it's, it's pretty awesome living in a small island. I mean, first of all, can I say what a week? I think everyone on the island, especially business owners, know exactly, you know, what a week this was. And I think it kind of slapped everybody upside the head. You know, we've, we've lived on an island that has kind of been in its own little bubble for, for quite a long time. And, 
And as a result, we've, we've not experienced a lot of what other cities and states and countries have experienced. And we're pretty lucky for that. Um, you know, we, we were notified that, that three people, well, we weren't notified. We, Coconut Wireless, small island. You know, we knew three people had tested positive after attending our, our brunch. And because we knew them, we were on it right away. We knew it, I think, before a lot of the public knew it. Um, and so we were able to kind of start storming it. But it was quite a bit after our show. You know, the first person tested positive nine days later, the second, 10 days later, and the third, 11 days later. So, you know, I think all four of the entities you brought on today, you know, when CDC, find, or not CDC, but when we've contact tracing finally called us, it was May 1st, you know, so quite a bit of time since our show and asked, you know, we need you to produce all the names and numbers of everyone who attended your show. And I kind of laughed, you know, like, and then I'm like, oh my God, she's serious. Like, like, I think all four people on this show know there's no way of doing that. And so, you know, what this comes down to now is what you know, we're fans of the show. We've been watching it from day one. What you and Uncle Charlie have always asked for, tell us where, right? You guys have been saying that from day one. And so I love when they called and said, you know, we're going to put out a press release and, and you're going to be on it. And that was great and very transparent. And I love that because then anyone we would miss by providing a phone number knows, hey, I should go get tested, right? That's, that's the way to protect your community, yourself, your friends, your family. Um, the problem with it is, I think we all know living on this island and how small it is, how many businesses were closed and affected because of COVID this week. So, you know, when they called us and said, you're gonna be on this press release, please don't feel targeted. Please don't feel shame. And at the end of the day, I'm like, but your words don't match your actions because there's many other places that aren't listed. You know, if we're gonna be transparent, we need to protect everyone. And so that means sharing the locations of, of everywhere that somebody could have gotten positive. So that was my takeaway from that. So- well, you, 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 you know, one thing that kind of, it, it, you know, I didn't know the dates, but I, you know, I'm I'm learning first time. And you know, when 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 you hear of dates, there's there's still of this theoretical study that right. when somebody gets sick, they start to track back. Yes. And the most guaranteed guaranteed thing you can do, and I think you folks did it right off the bat, go get tested, right? Yep. Yes. Go get tested, especially if that many days had transpired to go test it and see where it's at. See, you know, see exactly where it's at. And like Absolutely. I shared with Rob, you know, you can take all the measures in the world. And the thing is, it's really, you know, both Uncle Mel and I have been investigators before. We always felt, sometimes you gotta think outside of the box when you're gonna ask one question, because you gotta look at the situation from two or three different perspectives. You cannot keep on marching to the same tune and going in the same way. Because if you do that, it's only gonna yield the same results. You gotta look at it from different angles. Absolutely. And I felt that maybe that was kind of short played because it kind of answers your question. If businesses are not mentioned for the safety sake of the community since there's a spread, then maybe you're only catching a portion of the community testing when you should be getting the other portion as well. Exactly. And that's, that's where I see there's sort of like a disconnect that should be happening. And especially now, you know, a year ago, so many things were closed. So I think it was much easier to track, track people. But right now people are on the move. Businesses mm -hmm. are open, schools are partially open. You know, I don't, I know on an errand day, I've gone to 10 places. So, you know, we're not shut down like we were a year ago. And so this surge has come when we're absolutely at our most open. So, so very difficult to trace back, right? And yeah. kind of- I wanna, Dana, I wanna make a clarification because I see some posts about the salon. Let's, I, I should, it's my bad. I should have explained that we're not talking about your salon. No. Your salon, <laughs> your salon was not named. 
It's no. not your salon we're talking about. We're talking about an event that you folks have at the Sheraton. The, it's uh, a one month drag brunch. Um, yes, it's called the Brunch Babes. And so it's the event we're talking about. Yeah. Three hear people. a little bit about the event. Hey, this is, let's pretend it's Feel Good Friday, man. That's your promo. <laughs> So it's been pretty popular, you know, I, I mean, before all of this, we, we were sold out till July, you know, we definitely follow all guidelines, we have a maximum capacity, you're sat with your group and your reservation, um, everyone's social distance, all the, all the practices that we have to implement, but it's an amazing show, we have an amazing cast, and it's just, I think, brought a lot of joy to people right now at a time when there hasn't been a lot going on. You know, so it's it's been pretty amazing, and I think we've got quite a you know why it's amazing. They supported us so much, and it's done so much for our community, and and it's been really really awesome. So well, my my wife has been to two of the last shows. Yes, she loves it. I I I'll be honest, I'm uh, still a little paranoid about COVID, so I try not to attend. You know, I, I, I don't, and, um, but she, she loves it. And uh, she goes with the same girl she goes with, and they it's sit together. Again, she gave me all the 411, man. It's everything that they do, temperature checks and sanitizing and masks and all of that stuff. So safety uh, first. It's, it's kind of awkward, entertaining, and, you know, <laughs> being a performer, you know, and just, you know, engaging in the audience with the mask on. Even though we're not singing, I have an awful voice, but even though we're not singing, we're still wearing our masks to make sure everybody who comes in feels safe. And that's, that's the key is to be, is to feel safe. Absolutely. Well, I'm going to drag Charlie down there one day and we got Charlie and I are going to be. It will and, give you VIP seats. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. You're not understanding me. We want to perform. Oh, oh, awesome. We can well, help you with that. I have a lot of gowns <laughs> over there. I have a lot of gowns. What size are your shoes? Uh, uh, my shoe is an 11 and a half or 12. If not wide, then I got to have a 12. Oh, that's a 14 shoe. <laughs> so you got it. I got one for you. You, you notice, you notice in every show that you follow, you notice Uncle Charlie just minding my own business. It's always Uncle <laughs> Mel on offering to do stuff. And you got thrown under the bus, Uncle Charlie. <laughs> Charlie, we would sell out the place. <laughs> Absolutely. We would need a, we got to wait till after COVID. We need a bigger room. <laughs> and it's pretty awesome because a percentage of the proceeds go towards different nonprofits on Hawaii. So that was really important to us. So, you know, give back to the community. And so it's, yeah, it's, it's been an awesome event. So now you got, you guys found out. You got notified by the Department of Health on May 1st. Yes. yes. So prior to May 1st, the Coconut Wireless was out. Yeah. You had already did your safety protocols by then, right? Yeah. Yes. Well, the great thing about being a small island is I knew the three individuals. So I knew exactly where they sat, who they sat with. And so, yeah, I was able to start kind of, okay, they all got tested. Good. You know, so I'm, I'm not aware of anyone else that has attended our event that is um, a positive result other than, than those three. So um, I'd mm -hmm. also like to say hi to all of them and, and they are people that we love and adore and hope you're doing well. But you know, what you just mentioned there, Dane, is that is the key. Every, every program we, we've talked about from South Korea to mainland US to Hawaii, was to have some way of checking in the people that attended an establishment. Yes. Because you're, big, and, and you're right, because we have a small island, you can tell just by your group alone who sits with who. That's what that app tries to accomplish. It's that Absolutely. notification process to link up, say, hey, these people were positive. Therefore, you were sitting on the same table. You should go get tested to make sure you you know, you eliminate that variable of being positive or negative. You, at least you'll know. Excuse me, you'll know. So I found that uh, that is so true with what you said. And I think that's part of the the whole impetus or the force that, that Mel and I have been talking about for so long, and that is 
if you're going to get one shark bite, let the people know so they don't be naive and jump in the water and get bit too, right? right? They put signs, so, right? Yeah, so it's no different that, hey, if you were here, put it out there, don't have to mention name, but people can go walk down to the convention hall or walk down to their, their urgent care or wherever they will get tested because they came in close contact. That is the best, you know, we're talking about safety here. And Absolutely. something I think, that alone falls on deaf ears. It's, it almost becomes like, oh, due to financial reasons, we don't know if we can do that many tests. Well, who cares about finances? We're talking about safety. Right. right. Talking about lives that could be possibly affected. Absolutely. We got to get, ban- get, get on the bandwagon. Yeah. And I know this week has been a little challenging because of the search. You know, when we went to go get tested, it, it was a three hour line. You know, it was. Not I have baked in that sun. Oh no. my God. Not everyone can do that, right? Not everybody has that schedule or that life. So, you know, I definitely think they found other ways to figure it out and make it easier for people to test, which is, you know, obviously right now in the middle of a surge, incredibly important. And so, absolutely. So for me, I think like um, for the brunch babes, I can't speak on the hotel's behalf, but I can speak on the brunch babes' behalf. Um, If anyone's been to one of our brunches, Makali'i does an amazing MC job. He lets everybody know the rules prior to the, to the brunch starting. You know, he tells everybody, he lays it all out. Once you sit down, you know, you can take your mask off. Once you get up or stand up, put your mask on, you know, keeps everyone social distance. So Makali'i plays a very big, crucial role in trying to keep that, you know, keep it together for all of us. And the cast members that do perform they care about each and every person that comes there. So, you know, even though it's work, it's dancing, we're sweating, we're hot, we can't breathe behind that mask, we still leave it on because it protects everybody. You know, the county came out with a press release today about the testing options. So you go to my page, scroll down a few posts, you'll see it, just click on the link, it'll tell you everything you need to know about getting tested here on Kauai. Just wanted to put that in. Um, so. <clears throat> The, the the brunch babes is a show. Is that every month? Yeah, once a month. Once a month. And it's yeah. at the Sheraton at the old Sheraton Coconut Beach. I don't know what is what is it called uh, now? Sheraton Kauai Coconut Beach in Kapa'a. Oh, okay. And so our next show was supposed to be Mother's Day. Obviously, we've canceled it just out of extreme caution and safety. And so we are going to do a virtual show that day at 1130. So that'll be run off of our Brunch Babes Facebook site. And just because it's Mother's Day, we're just going to, you know, do it to, to share some love for all the moms out there. Um, you know, have some fun virtually. So, you know, we can't meet in person right now, but but definitely we can still put on a show. So you, you like Rob, had to make a tough financial decision as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I think yeah. community safety comes first. And so, absolutely. So you, you're can, you canceled the Mother's Day show. Oh my gosh. Okay. So yeah. for our viewers who would like to see the show, they can go to your, uh, what, what's the Facebook page? Brunch Fames. And so it's on and just uh, become a fan and all the information for contacting and all of that is on there. All our announcements are put on there and we'll be streaming uh, live on Mother's Day from there. So is that, yeah. uh, that going to be free or is that people going to be free? It's, it's our, gift, it's it's our gift to, the, to every mother out there. Oh, okay. Perfect. You know, because <laughs> I get to watch. Absolutely. <laughs> we'll put it on the big screen and Patsy and I will spend Mother's Day watching the brunch babes. Awesome. awesome. Now, you, it's called a brunch, but it's no, it's during COVID, obviously. You cannot can you have a brunch or is it all served to you? It's or? a brunch. It's a five course plated brunch. So it's not a buffet. You actually oh. get yeah, you get a plated meal served out to you. Wow. Yeah. It's a very bougie brunch. <laughs> Yeah, no, Patsy takes the pictures when they serve <laughs> it, and then she texts it to me. And then she texts me right after she eats it and says, that was delicious. Right. And I'm home eating fucking beans and Vienna sausage. That's, that's my brunch lunch. when she. They, goes have a, 
the Sheraton has a pretty amazing chef. So yeah, he and he full creativity and it's kind of his deal and he just runs with it. We do a different theme every month. So it's never the same show. It's always changing. And and so I think, you know, fans want to see what comes next, right? You know, we don't want to miss next one because we don't know what you guys are doing. So or what the food will be. And so, you know, it's kind of always a fun surprise. So so yeah. So somebody's posting about a t-shirt. You guys sell t-shirts? Uh, yep, you can go on the Facebook, um, on our Facebook page, and there's and a mask. link there where you can order as well as masks. Oh, wow. Yeah. Brunch Babes on Facebook, guys. Go check it out. Mother's Day. Save money. <laughs> take, your wife, take your wife to the Brunch Babes show. Tell them, tell them, no, tell them it's online. Just tell them, hey, honey, we're going to brunch babes on on saturday or sunday right. then, <laughs> surprise hey, no no you and cheap date no i am cheap. i am i am i am <laughs> but uh it, that's awesome man that, that's awesome so you the protocols were in place so really uh, nothing really changes going forward it's just it's just people gotta yeah. take responsibility though right people gotta I just think with the search, you know, putting that many people together in a room, you know, a restaurant or whatever, it's just, you know, for us, it just feels like, you know, we'll, we'll take a break. And so, absolutely. There's the mask. Oh, <laughs> oh cool. So, well, we appreciate you guys. Um, well, you know, I, I would her. like to say that um, I think for the viewers, it, it, it seems you, you have taken all the necessary precautions, but you know, nobody could predict that this would happen. So I don't uh, think I don't think it's on anybody's. You know, I don't think it's on anybody right now. I, uh, you know, before everyone came on tonight, Mel and I we talked about it and we said we need to find a way of how to control this spread. And just unfortunately, the spread went into a business such as yours or Rob. So because those businesses represents an accumulation of more than one person at a time. It kind right. of gets stationalized a little. But in fact, what we need to do is like any place else, we could be at a at a, a, a soccer event. And, you know, you may not be close, but you know, you got some people that may have gotten sick on a field, even though they didn't come in contact with anybody, but they're gonna have to name that event just because it was there. So I think in, 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 in all honesty, because you know there there were some positive cases that popped up there, you know I don't think any I, I hope nobody's thinking that it generated from there because That's, it doesn't talk, it doesn't sound that way at all. It doesn't sound can, that way. All right, you know, unfortunately, the air around somebody with COVID doesn't change color. You know, there's no fingerprint. There's no way of knowing, and so you know it it is the risk we take going in public it is you know we're we are all vaccinated our whole staff is vaccinated and so Good. part of the reason is you know our feeling was if if there's a 70 percent chance less of a chance that i can get covid then if i can't get it i can't spread it and so you know that's kind of how we all looked at it because we're in public and and as well as with our jobs at at the salon, it was just, it, it was a no brainer. And so, yeah, so, you know, we're doing everything we can to, you know, like, like Rob and his business, you know, far, far greater than what's, what's asked or expected of us to do just to try and be as safe as possible. But like you said, it, it doesn't matter always, mm -hmm. you know, so. No, it, it, I mean, now is not the time to be trying to play Inspector Clouseau and go figure out where did it start? <laughs> no one knows where it started. And no one will ever know where it started. Oh, yeah. And it's not important where it started. Now it's, let's get it isolated, contained, and let's move on and let's be together uh, uh, going forward. That's the key. The, you know, I agree. That's the key. So, anyway, I agree. Guys, thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate you guys for coming on. Everybody's asking what time, what time, what time? What time's the show on Mother's uh Day? Uh, Mother's Day will be 11 30 on May 9th, Sunday, May 9th. Brunch babes, go check it out tonight, not during this show. You stay on this show after the show, <laughs> and you go follow them and buy their shirts and masks and watch the show on Sunday. Um, 
and uh, hair razor salon. I'm not sure if you guys are like my dentist who don't take any new clients. <laughs> but um, guys, you guys, again, like Rob, you guys have been lifelong friends. We love you guys, yeah. like family. I love you guys too. We appreciate you folks so much for coming on and sharing your story here tonight. Um, and uh, don't forget, guys, everybody, check it out tonight. Charlie? No, thank you very, very much. Really appreciate it. Really appreciate you sharing as well. Thank you. Thank you to both of you for all you do. And, and just a message out there, you know, stay, stay safe, Koi. We've got this, you know. Koi knows how to do emergency mode, you know. You roll up your sleeves and you just do it. So we got this. So, so thank you. Awesome. Yeah. You guys stay safe. God you bless. Do. Thank you. We'll see you guys soon. Aloha. Aloha. All right, I, I, I'm going to check it out on Sunday. Man, we just I just saved myself probably 100 bucks, 150 bucks for Mother's Day. I hope she's not watching. Oh, well. Anyway. Woo! Hey, I hope you guys are enjoying the show tonight. I am. If you haven't shared yet, share it. We got two more guests tonight. I feel good, Charlie. You feel good? Feel good. Oh, yes. look at the background. Hey. Hello, Kale Mokihana. Ole na Allah. Aloha. Say yeah. that five times. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> hey, you know, we just had you on not long ago sharing about Mary Monarch, sharing about all the good things, the concert. Yes. And what a week it's been. It has. It has been a very, very interesting week on Kauai. Well, this is Kumule Na'ala, everybody. If you don't know uh -huh. her, um, welcome and thank you for sharing tonight. We just, we just, you know, we, we're giving everybody an opportunity that we're, was named as, a, as a, a business or an event, and yours obviously was one of them, and everybody's mm -hmm. like, whoa. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, well, first of all, before I even start, I want to model Kauai. Mahalo, all our sponsors. The um, Ekolungan We concert was quite amazing. Kauai is incredible. I mean, our people are awesome. Josh Tatofi, Kuana Torres, they had a blast and they were just blown away with, you know, the, the, how they organized the event. You know, everyone did such a good job staying in their stalls. Um, just everything was planned really well. And we got so much awesome, awesome compliments. And I believe Kauai was just ready for something like this, you know, to get out of their house and some fresh air and spend time together. You know, Mel and Charlie, we had people who decorated the back of their trucks, brought dinner. We collected on $10,000 from restaurants that people, you know, different um, food um, establishments one of them was rob's and charlie i agree with you the the french dip my all-time favorite all time yeah, favorite. oh my gosh so oh no and you gotta love rob such a great guy and always so neat and clean and you just feel very very safe at rob's good times girl so anyhow but um so i want to thank kawaii first and foremost because that was an incredible evening it really was and we're so appreciative because we are trying to build our hula school, our halal. After 25 years, we're building our school here in Kalahil. And, you know, it was just the outpouring of support was beautiful. And it was definitely a successful event for that. And the Hawaii Food Bank brought in 3,361 pounds of rice from our event. So that was just amazing. You know, all of that, um, our community coming together was awesome. So with that being said, on, I believe it was Saturday, um, Dr. Berriman gave me a phone call and I wanna mahalo her because I can only imagine that's not an easy phone call to make, to call me. And she was very clear with me in stating that um, as of you know, today, there was no evidence of any spread at our event, but there was someone with COVID at our event. And so if anyone was concerned that they may have been exposed or any con or have um, any symptoms and they were at our event, it was a good idea to go and get tested. So, uh, you know, I 
I think when you create events like this and you produce events like this, you put yourself out there um, for this kind of thing. But that's our kuleana, right? Our, we are the creative forces and, and you know, um, we're the ones that put ourselves out there. But so far, so good. Mahalo ke akua. The numbers are going down, which is great. And we keep everyone in our prayers. Um, but just so far, so good. I'm very happy about that. Now, let me ask you, as far as your um, your hello, mm -hmm. everyone has been tested. Everyone has been cleared. Correct. How many of you are actually vaccinated? Is a, a good uh, portion of you are vaccinated? A large portion. But, Uncle Charlie, I do want to be honest that I do respect everybody's choice. Yes. And while I, like I told Dr. Berman, while I do, um, for my family, for my family and for you know others i do encourage them to i can't make them i can't make them and so for but for the most part that evening we had 66 volunteers from our halal 66 people working each stall each not stall each lane had volunteers parking ushers we had security um dr sparks we were blessed in our halal to have three physicians and so dr sparks and his wife erin who is a physician's assistant they checked in everyone at our volunteer table took temperature checked if they've traveled lately uh checked if they've been vaccinated and you know some of my dancers are only 16 or 17 and they were a stall attendant so obviously they don't have um some of them don't have their vaccine yet uh but you know they just did a great job with that and we have the list of that dr berman never asked for that but we could always provide that if she wish um yeah so you know i am encouraging people to get vaccinated but i can't make them you know i have to respect that but i think the key is your entire allow did get tested and so far negative correct yeah, well, I, I wouldn't say my entire halal because not everyone attended the, 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 the that, event. Yeah. But whoever had whoever had contact or was in that area, you know, Coconut Wireless, what is so beautiful is the person that came to the event and had COVID, what a beautiful soul, right? Who reached out to me right away and said, hey, Kumulena Allah, you're not going to believe it. I have COVID. I am so sorry. And no apology is needed, right? No apology is needed. Um, so, you know, I was able to reach out to those who I felt may have had contact with this person and also advise them not to test immediately. And, you know, this is what our Dr. Sparks, who we are, we call him our Dr. Mokihana, you know, reminds us that you need a couple of days before you go in there to test because then you get this false, not false, false hope of this negative uh, you know, um, result and you want to wait and, and make sure, you know, if you've had any exposure, you want to kind of wait and isolate yourself and then go in to test. Um, but yes, correct, Uncle Charlie, as of now, everyone that may have had contact has tested and is negative. And some of them tested twice because just to make sure, you know, everyone gets eager to get up and go test right away. But we want to make sure that that test is effective and accurate, right? We've allowed the time um, to pass to if they were exposed to show up a proper result. Uh, yeah, I think you bring up a good point <clears throat> about the, the time period before you take the test. I mean, if you get exposed to someone that's positive and shedding the disease or the virus, uh, if you get exposed yesterday, you take a test today, it's not gonna show. Mm -hmm. uh, you gotta wait a few days. And in your case, it was a little different because you were notified relatively quickly after the event. So it may have been too soon to test. In other cases, by the time the coconut wireless or by the time the word got to the establishments, that time had already passed. So it was appropriate to get tested right away uh, at that point. Uh, in my wife's case, because uh, she had been to one of, not, the con not your concert, but to uh, the, the bash or the brunch he called the doctor and the doctor said because so much time had passed and she's vaccinated that it was well beyond the period of time uh, so she basically didn't didn't recommend testing but uh, so it, you know these time frames is so different with different people yes but to get tested immediately after exposure probably not gonna not gonna yield an accurate result 
And I, I heed the advice of Dr. Sparks. You know, he's guided everything that we've done. He's, uh, you know, even in, in planning for this event, you know, and I just want to add I, on, I try to look at things from the positive side. So when Dr. Berman called, I was like, you know, of course, a little afraid at first, but then I thought, gosh, if no cases come out of our event, Mel, this shows that we can have events on Kauai if safety measures are taken and social distancing and masking and cleaning of restrooms. You know, outdoors is definitely ideal. I believe that's my personal opinion. I think most um, physicians or, you know, the Department of Health would agree as well outdoors because of the, um, you know, the fresh air flowing around. And so that's, I'm just excited i'm holding on though don't get me wrong i'm not you know counting the chicks before they hatch but i i really really feel this uh will open you know opportunities for graduations maybe that can be held outdoors you know so if we can hold strong and hopefully no cases come out of ekolumianui i think it's a wonderful thing and i believe our county officials are are also keeping a close eye on this as well because this will show that, um, you know, we can celebrate and have fun and celebrate, you know, special events, especially our kids, their graduation coming up, but just with being careful, you know, with masking and keeping the parking stalls were awesome because it was every other stall. So that was great. Our restrooms. Oh my gosh, it was cleaned after every use, super, super clean. And everything was just wonderful. Well, well, uh, you know, I, I don't take any credit because our team was fabulous, well organized, everybody stepped up to the plate and, and everyone had a wonderful time. The spirit was great that evening, you know, and even days after everyone calling saying what a wonderful time they had. So thank you for allowing us to share, you know, about Ekolumia Nui. It was a wonderful evening. How many, how many people was at the concert? Uh, we had about, you know, I don't have my ticket count on me, but I want to say we had about 400 cars show up. Wow. The people we can't count, right? Because, yeah. because they're in the car, right? So I had a gentleman called me a Sunday. He's like, hey, I was at your event, but me and my wife I was in the car the whole time. I got to go test. I was like, uncle, you know, if you didn't leave your car, it's probably very unlikely that you had any exposure. He said, oh, okay, okay. Now, when the next concert? I said, oh let's get through this first you know he had such a great time so yeah there was a lot of cars there let's take an average if we say 400 cars mm -hmm. average two people but some cars because like trucks they had more you know you, you're looking at 800 plus right yeah a lot of people yeah and if you and if you're a cheap you know, I, like I could be a little off and i could get to a I'm gonna put six people in a car because it was charged. The charge was per car, right? But we didn't see a lot of that, you know, which we was kind of amazed. A lot of people were couples, some singles in the car. You know, I walked around a little bit throughout just to check, and it was it was really nice. It was really nice for the most part. On if I saw a biggest crowd, it was maybe six, seven, who came in a car. You know, Pumu, I, I I tell you, this, it was Mel. He and Patsy are going to come in on car. I guarantee yeah. you, when they park, you open up the trunk, we'll get about four or five guys jump out of the trunk. That's Mel. So. I load them up. I load, and, and I would charge them per person. Me. Yeah. I'd make money. Oh, my daughter's messaging me, Mom, not 400 cars. There was only 340 cars. <laughs> so sorry. sorry. No, and that's what I mean. They're so on it and took, you know, did a great, great job. Yeah. Like you said, it, it goes to show that it can be done. If you, if it's organized properly, if the security structure is in place, if people are disciplined, people not running around and all of that, it can be done. And yeah. uh, I think that was a good experiment that, you know, other events can happen the same way. You know, and I want to share, we had a lot of kupuna. A lot of kupuna came to the event. You know, this one auntie in the corner, there was four of them. I'm hoping, I'm hoping they're watching tonight. There was four of them and they were weaving papale, sitting down 
and weaving papale and they had like a side view to the stage and the one auntie one of my homana said kumu come look come look these aunties they're so cute in their chairs right in front of their car weaving papale and my heart was so happy because and then the one auntie the eldest in the group the queen of the group she says this is her first time out first time out since covid you know came into our lives and she's like thank you so much so oh that meant the world you know i think for a lot of people it was their first event you know first of some some sort getting out well when this is all over you know charlie's doing this concert that's going to be amazing it's going to be inside the stadium um oh. thousands of people uh, i mean it's just going to be amazing it's going to be amazing awesome. all right look at charlie's face yeah 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 it's not hard though i tell you that you know the parking stall thing worked really really well in the stadium might be a little more challenging when COVID is gone you give them uncle charlie well it'll be it'll be after COVID when everything is a go and then we're gonna have i mean it's gonna be like nothing anyone has ever seen you you, you know i love this brother so much because <laughs> It, it never faces me. I, I gotta be prepared because he's gonna volunteer me. He already volunteering uh, volunteering me for for doing drag with him at the drag show. Oh, <laughs> I'd love to see that. Mel goes from hula to drag. Absolutely. Uh, awesome. will break all attendance records. You can all tell Mrs. Mrs. Iona is looking at me at one. Oh we're, my we're gosh! We great. Give my love to your beautiful wife because she. Yeah was truly a force behind Ekolu Meanui, you know? And so I know she's also rooting that no cases come out of there and we can prove that we can have, you know, great events on Kauai. But hats off to our Kauai people, hats off to everyone who is stepping up to the plate to speak up and to those we are encouraging to vaccine and to those that wish not to, we respect that. But boy, that's the, you know, we got to protect each other, whether it's vaccine, mask, you know, and show aloha, right? Show aloha. I saw your post mail really quick today that you were a little disappointed with our community. Some of the things that you um, have seen, some of the posts that you have been seeing on Facebook during COVID, I did a lot of cleanup of my Facebook, anything negative er, out, right? So I don't get to see all of that, but um, this is not a time. This is not a time to point fingers. This is a time to support, you know? Look at Rob, he has, uh, he's one of many businesses that has struggled, right? Has done so, has got hit hard during COVID. And he, you know, he opens back up, he provides a safe and clean environment. And this was definitely, I'm sure, heartbreaking for him and his amazing staff, you know? And if you've been to Rob's, you know, you ain't, you ain't getting in there without sanitizing your hand right <laughs> you know so um just you know kawaii is now's the time to pull together kawaii aloha big time and you know we can do it we can do it we protect each other we have to be the pale yeah the protection for each other and so out of respect for one another and aloha for one another that's how we do it right keep that mask on and right now my focus is really to keep my mary monarch group safe I need them, you know, on, on as far as from a halal standpoint, our Marimana group has to be safe and um, soon we'll be venturing off to Hilo. So I'm super excited for that. I want to keep them safe and healthy. Uh, we cannot wait for that. Wish you all the best over there. Uh, again, I want to thank you, um, Kumu, for coming on tonight and sharing. Yeah. You know, we just wanted to, you know, just, I mean, clear the air if, you know, for lack of a better term, just inform and educate the public what's really going out there. Uh, we got local businesses, local events that are doing everything humanly possible to keep it safe. COVID doesn't care. COVID will pop up anywhere. And um, we just gotta, we gotta be responsible individually, personally to cut the spread as best we can. So Absolutely. thank you so much. Thank you, folks, very, very much. And mahalo nui again, Kauai, and everybody who supported us with this concert. And let's let's heal and let's build back, um, you know, together and, and move in Holomua. So I'm excited for our island, and I'm excited to see that numbers stay low. And graduation is coming.
doing so many awesome, awesome KP graduating. So let's you know, be able to celebrate with them this wonderful moment in their lives. All right. Love you guys so much. Thank you for having me. All righty. Stay safe. God bless. Take care. We'll see you soon. All right. Aloha, Henry. Aloha. All right. The Wi-Fi was going a little cuckoo in the end over there. Or was it just mine? No, that's hers. On you heard the side. banjo? Yeah. Well, we get Trey Morikawa. Yeah, we got the headliner, Charlie. The we got the headliner. You want to do the have the honors of introducing our headliner there, bro? Yeah, this is Mr. Troy Morikawa of Troy. He's coming on in. He's in in the waiting room. Did you admit him already? Yeah, he's. I brought him in. Uh, he's in cyberspace. There he hey, is. Alvin Paleka, thank you, bro. Thank you. There he is. Mr. Troy Morikawa, we're gonna wait for his uh, audio. His audio coming on. There he is. Can you can hear us, Troy? Uh, yeah, I can hear you guys now. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah, I was thanks. I was watching NCIS last night, and they had this scene of uh, a scene that was in a submarine, and that's what it looked like, bro. <laughs> Look like you stay in a submarine. Yeah, he is. Submarine. <laughs> What's up, Troy? How you doing, buddy? What's up, guys? What's up, Mel? Charlie? Oh, Ooh. what an honor to be on the same platform with uh, Rob and Terrence and Dane and Lena Allah. Wow. I feel intimidated now. <laughs> no, nothing. I think, you know, um, you know, as, as you heard throughout the show, um, because your established was mentioned, but, you know, what we're trying to do is trying to uh, inform and educate the people how you know, something like this can, can happen anywhere. But one thing, uh, you know, I like the people to know, and, and as, as full disclosure, I was, uh, I was with Troy in the early inception when you were at the old location where WB's is now, yeah? Right. At the second location. And uh, uh, my group, we started to play music in Troy's, and then we followed him to the new location uh, where it is now across from McDonald's in that in the little mall right across. Uh, from McDonald's in Lihue. But you know, uh, Troy, I guess within this last week, a lot of things that happened because of COVID, there um, had some reported uh, in uh, cases at, at, at your location. So maybe you kind of want to um, start by telling our viewers, you know, how you were informed and then, you know, what actions did you, did, did you take uh, once, once you were informed and, uh, even to the point of notifying, if, if you notified anybody or, or the health department, uh, you know, that part, I don't know. But maybe you can share with our viewers tonight. What did you do? Okay, on uh, this last Tuesday, mm -hmm. uh, we were informed, the staff was informed that one of our employees, we were informed by the employee that uh, she had tested positive uh, on Tuesday. Okay. So, first thing Wednesday, well, we inform, informed the whole staff, and on Wednesday, the entire staff got tested. Um, so, we shut down from Wednesday, out of precaution, and on Thursday morning, I got the whole place disinfected. You know about that, so. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and... I mean, that's, we really, we take it every precaution that we could, um, you know, prior to this happening. And, and there's, I honestly don't know what more we could have done to prevent, that prevented this from happening. Uh, I don't know, it's, it's pretty scary. You know, it is, okay. this virus is, uh, this virus is very, very scary. Well, I, I do want to let the, the, the public know that, uh, again, what Troy is mentioning is that when he, when he found out and he, he called me um, and I agreed to go over and disinfect his whole operation, because as many of you know that I, I've been doing that now since COVID started, 
And uh, if any of you have, have been to Troy's, you know, there's the office, there's the back storage area, there's a the front area, there's the restroom in the back. And we went over every square inch, even the bar uh, where his cutoff equipment, his dartboards, his pool table, his curtains, any place and every place that someone could have released micro droplets, we nailed it to the whole place. So that's something that we did. Um, what was interesting to note, and I didn't know you did it, but you might want to explain what you, because some people say, you know, you get on karaoke machine, you share the mics, right? You share the mics. But why don't you tell the people what you do with, with, with your microphone setup and all that, if they want to sing? What, what is your protocol there? Well, if you, come to sing karaoke and, and you know a, a lot of people do come to Troy's for for karaoke um first thing we say is if you want to look for songs we, we have one title book and one one artist book that's on the side by the wall um with a box of gloves so if you want to look for songs you first have to put on gloves and then you can scan through the book and uh write down the numbers of the songs that you you pick and turn it into whoever's running the karaoke machine um then you go to your table and wait for the, we'll bring you the mic. Uh, we notify you that every, every person that sings uh, in Troy's, it's mandatory that they wear a face shield. So you can bring your own face shield or we, we, you can buy a face shield from us for $5. It's just it's like, like these, these ones here. Mm -hmm. so if you buy one then it's yours to take home and the next time you come you know you can bring it and use that again so you have to use a face shield after every singer is done singing we take the mic back we take we take off a mic cover we have mic covers so disposable mic covers so we take off of the mic cover we wipe the whole mic down with a Clorox wipes or, or two Clorox wipes. Then we let it we let it self dry, um, and then we put on a, a brand new mic cover, and we put we put it back on the on the rack because we have four mics, so you know we can rotate it so that we always have a mic available that's clean and disinfected for the next singer. Mm -hmm. uh, there have been times when they buy a face shield and they they sit down, so we start the song. And then they start singing and then they, they take off their face shield. So what we do is we, we press pause on, on the karaoke machine until until they <laughs> until they put the, the face shield back on. Because that's I mean that's that's just you gotta be safe, you know, you gotta be safe. Perfect. No, and, and you, in, the, in the last wait. couple of months, what, what we also did was we my cousin and my 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 niece, they they made QR codes for the artist book and the song title book. So it, it, on every table, there's a table tent with the QR codes in there. So you can just scan it with your phone and, and you'll have the, the whole song book in your phone if you want the artist book, or you can have both books if you want. So we're, we're always trying to, you know, come up with more things that to make it safe for the customers as well as our employees. I mean, it's because that's what it's about, you know. Mm -hmm. Right on. Oh. Troy, how long have you been in business now? Uh, April 1st, a month ago, we made five years. And uh, this has to be the most challenging times ever. <laughs> yes, it definitely, definitely is. I mean, it was challenging, you know, for the year. We, we shut down for three months uh, from middle of March last year to middle of June. And then we slowly open back up. And I just want to say, you know, thanks to all the, the local clientele that, that comes to Troy's. I mean, it's during that, from when we opened in June till now, you know, there were no visitors on the island. And so we, we survived off of the, the locals and we're so grateful and, and we appreciative of all the support that we have. Uh, and 
Very grateful. Very grateful. Humble. Right on. Uh, your 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 place is is uh, you know it's an amazing place. You you know I and I I'm not going to ask you for your recipe, but your popcorn is the best the best popcorn on the planet. Um, it is the if you haven't had Troy's popcorn, with and, and or of course in the Aradé, yeah. I don't think he make the Aradé, but he does make the popcorn, and uh, you gotta. It's just amazing because Troy, you you don't have a kitchen, right? No, we don't have a kitchen. So you bring your own food. Yes, you can bring your own poo-poos, whatever you want to eat. You can go next door to KCL, uh, order some food there, pay for it, and then she'll deliver it to Troy's for you. Uh, so that that works out really good because you know we don't want our customers coming in here drinking and then driving home on an empty stomach or anything. So it it, it works both ways. You know, we give them business and they they keep our Customers are full, not too full, hopefully, but, but you know, get something in their stomach. Well, we've had um, we've had several uh, get-togethers, whether it was uh, for different occasions. Troy and Troy and always been very accommodating um, with allowing you know you bring your own food and and uh, it's just a fun place to go. And are you, are you back open now? Uh, we are planning to open tomorrow tomorrow and uh, see how that goes um and then wednesday we have every wednesday we have live music uh oev john mahi them bronson uh choco yaris and a, a drummer aaron i don't know his last name but, but they're really they're really good you know but not, as good, guys, but, but not as good as the guys before well well <laughs> nah, yeah well that's that's close, a close, loaded man. question, close. man. <laughs> Crap. Very close. <laughs> Charlie told me it, the last one was way better, but uh, <laughs> you know, I the live live music is always so much fun. I mean, you know, when you go out with your friends and you're hanging out, and and Troy, your 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 uh, Troy's right now is social distancing. All of that is strictly enforced, correct? Oh, definitely, definitely, strictly and for hey, for anybody who's been at Troy's, I mean, uh, you know, since the pandemic, since we reopened in June, they they can tell you we 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 not only have guidelines, but we strictly enforce our guidelines, and anybody who's been here will <laughs> can, can tell you that for sure. I, I love when you pause the karaoke song if they take out that. To me, that's cool. That is. Well, we just trying to do our part, you know. Uh, and and I believe everybody has, every individual has has a role in this, you know. If we want to arrest this this uh, virus, uh, it, it's 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 just, I mean, I don't know, I don't know how to describe it, but it's it's uh, everybody needs to do their part. Everybody needs to do their part. You know, one thing I did want to say is uh, it's amazing how you've taken all those thousands of songs as well as artists, put it into a QR code and let people individually upload it into their phones. So they don't have to handle anything there. They can just go to their phone, pick a song and just pick up by number and, and go from there. I mean, I don't know if any other place has done that on island that has karaoke. You know, that, uh, that, that's I don't. I, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know if anybody else has it has done that either. But you know, the downside of that is, is they it's so small in their phone. The songs, you know, to scroll scroll down that many songs, <laughs> it could take a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's and then true. and then they put the wrong number because it's so small. <laughs> and then they're ready yeah. to sing the song, and then the wrong song play, boy. Too bad you know can pause them when the when they go off tune. <laughs> I wouldn't last long in Troy's. Uh, everybody, everybody sings pretty, pretty, pretty well, pretty well. Well, you we got you, the you, reverb and the echo to help help some people yeah, along. Yeah, you have a good system. Yeah. I think for those of you that haven't been to Troy's, um, if you cannot sing like me, you sound good. I promise you, the thing is amazing. <laughs> 
Amazing. So, so Troy, going forward, going forward, your your staff, they all been tested already? Yes. But, okay. They'll be tested. What about, what about vaccinated? Have they been vaccinated as well? Um, so when, more than, I'd say, more than half of our staff is, has been vaccinated. Okay. Um, and like Lay Maala said, you know, we, we, I strongly encourage people to get vaccinated, but you, you know, right. we, you cannot force, force it on anybody. But I strongly encourage everyone to, to get vaccinated. And when you when, when I was disinfecting your place, I noticed you have several sanitation stations, you know, with sanitizers up in different parts of the room for your patrons, right? Oh yeah, definitely. Like as soon as you walk in, there's a table with the sanitation sanitation station right there. Um, we have them on the bars uh, on the bar. Once <clears throat> uh, any group of people, or even if it's a single person sits on one of the tables with the tablecloths. Once they leave, we immediately take off the tablecloth, put a new table, wipe it down, put a new tablecloth on, wipe down the chairs. Uh, we we try to try our best to take the steps to keep our customers safe. We know we want them to feel safe. We want, I mean, if they don't feel safe coming in, coming in the establishment, then mm -hmm. There's no sense, you know, of us being open. And I, and you know, another thing I want to, I, I want to say is, like every Wednesday we have live music, and my my parents, <clears throat> they come, well they are, they didn't come for a month or two because they broke both broke their uh, hips. But anyway, they but lately they've been coming back every Wednesday except last Wednesday because that's when we closed. So we're gonna open tomorrow. Uh, we're gonna have live music on Wednesday, and I can guarantee you that they'll be here. So if they're 82 years, they're going to be 83, 83 this year. So, you know, if I felt for one second that it wouldn't be, it's not a safe environment, then we wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't have them come or we wouldn't even be opening it, we'd be opening it. But we have everything um, in place, all the guidelines. Uh, like I said, we disinfected the place and everybody's been tested. So we, we're going to try and open tomorrow and see how that goes. Right on. Yeah. That was the whole purpose, Troy. That was the whole pur purpose of doing this show tonight was you read the paper. And, and don't get me wrong. I'm not bashing the paper. I'm not bashing nobody. I think it's important. We inform people uh, of, of these uh, potential cases in public places. I think it should be every public place, not just a few. But the whole purpose was with that comes a stigma that, oh, my God. And we wanted the public to understand that these establishments, these events are practicing the safety pr protocols uh, that, that are required and then some. They are safe establishments. They are safe events to go to. And the fact that you the positive case wasn't created in Troy's or in Rob's or at the, at the brunch or at the concert, it, it, it just didn't. This virus is all around us. We just wanted to make sure the public understood that, hey, we got responsible business people that are, that are taking care of their employees and their customers. And that's all we wanted to do tonight. And we really appreciate you coming on and sharing. I, you know, I, I, I know you, first time you use Zoom? <laughs> first time, I'm not very computer uh, literate. So uh, yeah. thanks Charlie for coming by and, and <laughs> <laughs> showing me how to, how to do it so this is the way i look at it this is the way i look at it you know the virus has been around for a while the fact that we were we were not getting positive cases uh you know we knew once we opened up to travel we were going to get more cases and and uh it, it it just it to me i think it was it was uh responsible when people found out that they were positive that they they, they told people they 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 shared it and not hide because that's how we were able to identify so many cases. And I can guarantee you one thing, Troy, tomorrow when you open up, Wednesday when, when you open up, when people walk in there, they're gonna be more responsible. They're not gonna be afraid. The people watching tonight, I feel so much more comfortable only because of what you just said of how you guys are disinfecting and, and doing what you do. And I think 
more people when they go to Rob's or they go to the, the brunch or they go to Troy's, they, they're just going to be more responsible and they're going to be more safe. And uh, hopefully that's what comes out of tonight's show. Right, uh, thank you guys for having me. And I want to say thanks to my, our, our team at Troy's, you know, our staff is, is, is amazing. They, they, they go above and beyond um, what they're asked to do. And, and, I, I am so proud and, and grateful that they they are a part of our team. I, I just need, I can I can't emphasize that enough. Good. So thanks, Mel and Charlie, for allowing me to come on. Um, really appreciate it. Well, we'll, we'll uh, okay. One thing, settle down. We'll probably come over there and do a live, a Facebook live from your location, and and have some fun. Um, but I, I do I do want to thank you for coming on tonight and uh and sharing and um and i appreciate what you do my friend and and i gotta tell you you got you i can see some of your employees on here and the feeling is mutual man they love you and uh they appreciate what you do for them as well so yeah thank you bro good luck man stay safe all right you thank guys you, too bro. mahalo take care bro there you have it there you have it charlie yeah. What a fun filled night. Um, to our viewers, I hope, you know, we, we, we give the, really, it, it's, it's all about our businesses because in order for us to thrive, we have to have businesses like this and we have to have them, uh, give them that platform to share how they feel um, and let you see what, what role they play in our community, how they attack the virus, what measures have been in place, what new measures they're gonna put in place, uh, and how the coconut wireless work in getting people to go get tested. That's, that's, that's the bottom line. So I, I wanna thank uh, Rob, I wanna thank Dane and Terrence, I wanna thank Kumu Lena Allah, as well as my brother, uh, Troy Morikawa. Thank you so much to all of them for joining us tonight, willing to share their you know, their, their mana'o with, uh, with the viewers and let them know that, you know, their businesses will continue. It's just little, little changes here and there. It's going to be made because they have to, it's all about coexisting with, with the virus. And if we can do that successfully, knowing that the virus is still around, but keeping everybody safe. And I think that's a pretty, uh, I think, you know, we have something there. But uh, like they say, if, if there are certain individuals that don't want to play by the rules, then, you know, we don't, we don't need that around here because it can get very dangerous too. So we just want to be around safe, safe people, safe people and safe businesses at all times. That's, that's all. Hey, Mel. Thank you, Charlie. You know, I, I was just thinking <clears throat> anyone can get this virus. Uh, imagine you go to Walmart, you go to uh, Costco, you go to wherever, and uh, somebody sneezes, coughs, boom, you end up with the virus and you just happen to be working at one of these establishments. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I just had the feeling that a lot of people are thinking that these are, these, the, the virus was created in these establishments. And as you heard tonight, uh, I was pleasantly, I, I wouldn't say surprised because I know these guys, they're all responsible people. But I was, I was just uh, very happy to hear the level of safety that these people are, are putting into their businesses. I feel good. It makes me feel really good. And I now understand why Kauai has, uh, has done so well. Mm -hmm. uh, I also want to thank those that stepped forward to share their, uh, their positive results. So that got the ball rolling, got people testing. So it was very brave. And, and, and like I, I said a couple of nights ago, a few nights ago, uh, they're heroes in my book. And I also wanna thank everyone that is, is running the testing and, the, and, the, and all of this, the, the county and the state uh, for doing what they need to do to get this under control. Now we had one case today. Let's, let's, let's pray that that stays that way and drops down to zero and let's get back to normal. We're not gonna do this if, we, if we're fighting each other. Let's, let's work together and get it done. With that, thank you all. I hope you guys enjoyed yourself tonight. I was enlightening, I think. Um, 
Thanks, Charlie, again, for all those provocative questions. I cannot wait to see you at the brunch and at the concert. <laughs> we love you guys, man. We'll see you guys on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. You guys take care. Stay safe. God bless. Aloha. Aloha.